Welcome back, everyone, to episode number three of the Simple Engineer Podcast. I'm the host, Andrew, and today I wanted to talk about non-traditional career paths. I see a lot of times on social media, on, you know, a lot of different places, whether it's forums, Stack Overflow, uh, not so much Stack Overflow, but just regular forums, um, interpersonal connections that I have with other people who want to get into the technology engineering space and also people in you know my Discord, Twitter, things like that, where I see a lot of talk around traditional career paths where it's, you know, you have a degree, you went for a computer science degree at some college, it doesn't really matter where, um, you know, you were coding before that. You found a love of coding. You were interested in game development. You were interested in any of these kinds of things that you correlate in your mind with technology. You correlate with your mind with engineering, anything like that. And there are some people like that. Like there are the George Hotzes of the world where their entire life has been in some form or another, some discipline of engineering or some discipline of computer science or programming or science or any of these things. But there are other people that try to come out of a very non-traditional career path like myself. I I don't have a four-year degree. Um, I was a carpenter for most of my early stage career, I guess you could call it. And Even growing up, I never had any aspirations to actually write code, to be an engineer, um, or to do anything in the technology space, really. It wasn't really after until I was, I think, 21 years old, where I kind of had a life switch where I found that I was drawn to technology because of video games. For some reason, people always make that correlation in their mind where it's like, hey, I like video games. How do I get a job in video games. Okay. Technology. It's not really the same thing. It's not like you're playing video games during your job. Um, unless you're in game dev, but that's a whole nother story. Don't, don't join game dev. That's, that's my, that's rule number one. I would tell that any new engineer don't become a game developer. It will never work out the way you think it will. Obviously it has for some people, but on the whole, it will never work out the way that you want it to, but that's another thought. Um, Yeah, so I came from a non-traditional career path. I grew up in a blue-collar family. Uh, There wasn't a lot of emphasis on computers or, you know, my parents never really used computers growing up. I used computers growing up when I was, you know, I think I started playing RuneScape when I was 12 years old. And that's kind of where I first, the, the wheels started turning to how to manipulate a game engine to do some things it wasn't supposed to do. But other than that, I mean, I, I mean, I grew up playing Xbox and, and computer games but I never really had any sort of passion in creating games or in creating products or websites or any sort of engineering or any sort of product or, or you know, anything that had to do with engineering. I, I just never had any of that. Um, most days for me were kind of growing up, uh, waking up super early, doing some sort of manual labor, uh, sports, things like that. And, I really had a life switch at around 21 years old where I just kind of fell in love with the lifestyle of technology before I actually fell in love with the technology and the, you know, day-to-day job responsibilities of technology. So when I first went to college, I actually wanted to be a history teacher, which is oddly enough, uh, something that I aspire to do. But actually, let me rephrase that. I didn't want to be a history teacher. I wanted to be a historian. Uh, I loved history. I love World War II. I love World War One. I, I love ancient Rome, all those kinds of things. But for some reason, being young or being 19 years old at the time, I thought that you could go from being, you know, in college to that dude on, you know, you see on ancient aliens that has like the crazy hair and is just talking about aliens. For some reason, my brain made that connection where it was like, hey, you can go directly from college directly to doing this thing, which you definitely can't do. Um, I'm not saying it's never been done, but that's not really the the path of least resistance. Let's put it that way. But for me, technology kind of popped up out of nowhere when I was about 21 years old. And when I first started going to school for it, a lot of the curriculums that I was seeing and that I was a part of were super outdated. Like, I mean you definitely need to know the things that they were talking about, but it was a lot of like active directory creation of users. It was very directed towards almost like a help desk role. 
um, you know, IT support, things like that. But there wasn't really an emphasis on computer engineering. Um, and that could just be where I went to college. I went to a community college at first. Uh, it was this place in Rockland in, in New York. But and it was, it was a great program, don't get me wrong. But there wasn't a lot of emphasis on actual computer engineering. They didn't even have a degree for computer engineering. And I'm not even totally sure if they did have a degree for computer engineering, if I would have taken it. You know, it just might have seemed too hard for me. It was, I always thought of engineering as this highly mathematical process. And I'm not saying traditional engineering is not that process. It, it very well is. But in terms of software engineering, yes, there's a bit of math to it if you want to do, you know, iterations or basic arithmetic or basic computation. But there's really not that much math that goes into it when you're actually creating software, when you're actually creating web applications, when you're actually creating all these things. So right off the bat, I had this, you know, consensus in my mind that I need, I, I couldn't learn software engineering. I couldn't become an engineer because I didn't actually know math. Again, another misconception that's totally not true. But when I first got into technology, again, it was more of the IT support help desk kind of classes. And I was still working as like a bartender and I was still working as uh, on construction sites as like a Mason uh, with my dad. But I didn't really realize that this world of computer engineering, the world that I'm in now, this world of cloud engineering, of, of these kinds of things was out there. There was no curriculum for AWS engineering. There was no curriculum for Azure engineering. Even though I hate Azure because it's a Microsoft product and they make you join a domain if you want to do anything, whatever. There was no domain for those actual skills. The skills that I think a lot of students now would do great things with. There's a lot of opportunity for cloud engineers out there. There's a lot of opportunity for DevOps engineers out there. There's a lot of opportunity for cloud security engineers, um, even AWS sysadmins, things like that. But you don't hear about that stuff when you're on that traditional career path. And I'm not sure why. I, I, I've been trying to think about this, and I'm not exactly sure why that traditional career path doesn't lend itself to being a cloud engineer. Now, I think some people will have a bit of bias in their thinking on this subject and think that they actually have heard about those things in a traditional career path. But I really think a lot of the actual information that we're getting now is coming from either you know Discord, YouTube, all these content creators and personalities that have introduced us to new fields in the actual engineering space and not so much the traditional career path of school. Now, there's nothing really wrong with that. Like traditional career path in school is going to make your life easier in the beginning and we'll get to that. But... I'm not sure who to blame on this kind of topic, if there even is anyone to blame, but it just seems that traditional career paths are not really broadening their horizons and keeping up with the times. You know, technology is this ever-changing space, right? You could learn something, and in a year, you're completely outdated and you need to learn something else. So, for example, you know, if you learned AWS now, right, and for some reason, everyone just switches to Heroku in a year. I have no idea why they would do that. Heroku on enterprise is a bit tough, but that tribal knowledge that you had in AWS would not be operational in Heroku for the most part. Or say everyone went back to, you know, they found a key fundamental flaw in cloud computation or cloud engineer or cloud servers, and they all went back to on-prem servers. Me as a cloud engineer, I would be really, really behind in that. I, I've never worked on-prem in my entire life. I had one server rack at the first job that I ever worked at. I have a server upstairs that I just use to host minimal applications. But as someone that hit the technology space about five years ago when I did, and AWS was super prominent, I never actually had to work on on-prem. And I would be super outdated. But I don't think that schools pick up on this kind of thing, right? Some schools are still teaching you know, Java as the main object oriented programming language. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but if you're going to become a software engineer, you're most likely going to be using some sort of node application or some sort of um, react or something along the lines of JavaScript. And I don't think teaching Java is something that is going to help you become a better software engineer in today's standards. Now I could be totally wrong about that. And people that are loving Java are going to freak out and like, Oh, it's the best object oriented programming language. And it's a great web development language, but I'm just saying it seems like a lot of schools are not keeping up with the actual times of where technology is going and how rapidly it's going there. For example, I, I don't see many colleges outside of things like, you know, UC Berkeley and these big top tier tech schools that are teaching anything about machine learning, deep learning, AI, or anything like that. Most of them are still teaching Python 2.7, which again, you're, you're writing Python, but 
you got to keep up with the times and at least switch your library up to 3.8 or 3.7 where we're at now. I don't see any schools teaching AWS Lambda. I don't see any schools teaching serverless application architecture. I don't see any schools teaching um, a lot of the front-end frameworks that we have to deal with today as front-end engineers or software engineers. I'm not saying they're the best frameworks ever, but what I am saying is we have to play within the parameters of the game that we're given, right? We can't just blow up the, the whole game. Uh, I forget who it was, but someone in my Discord actually showed me one of their assignments from some, I think they go to some college in Florida, but it was actually one of the most comprehensive assignments I've ever seen from a school. He had to make a full stack application using React, Express, Node, and MongoDB. It could have been SQL, but I think it was MongoDB or a document-based database on the back end. And it was awesome to look at because I, I've, it was the exact project for my personal website that I had been working for or with at the time. And it was really cool to see that a college actually saw that that had so much value that they would offer that as a, not only a team building experience because he had to build it with three other people, but also just a real world application of the skills that you're learning in college. I can't tell you how many times people come out of school with computer science degrees. And I really wish I had a computer science degree and learned the basics of arithmetic and linear algebra coming from that computer science background, but I, I don't have it and I don't plan on going back and getting it. But I can't tell you how many times people come out of school with a computer science degree and they barely know how to code. Like coding is just this thing that's not like any other thing that you've ever done in your life. You have to do it to learn it. You can't talk about theory. Like I talked about in the last podcast, you can't talk about theory. You can't talk about doing it. You have to actually do it. Right. And I, I just don't think that schools nowadays, and I'm speaking from personal experience here and you know, some people that I've talked to and myself, but I don't think that schools are keeping up with the times and they're showing us these crazy old curriculums where we're doing Python turtle programming or Python GUI programming with turtle. And it's, it's, they're not showing us any real world application of the skill that they're trying to help us build. And that's what I talk about with non-traditional career paths. And people always ask me all the time, like, do you recommend a non-traditional career path? And I really don't, right? Well, I do and I don't actually, let me be honest here. So, So if you're going the non-traditional career path, it can either go really good or really bad, right? Either you, you know, if you're someone that really loves to learn and you're a great listener and you're okay with being wrong and you're, you know, you're not married to a certain idea. Like you don't go into a non-traditional career path and go, I'm only going to learn JavaScript, right? And if someone else tells me not to learn JavaScript, I'm going to say they're wrong. I'm right. I'm going to learn JavaScript. That's a bad example because obviously you should learn JavaScript. This is the biggest language out today, um, even though it's bloated to all hell. But if you're in a non-traditional career path, you need to keep your eyes open for any opportunity that may present itself. And you also need to keep your, you know, your expectations of a career very, very low at, at first. Um, I, I don't think a lot of people will tell you this, but you're going to probably have to work a kind of shit job if you go a non-traditional career path without a degree and you try to get a job as a software engineer uh, you know cloud engineer any of these kinds of things a company's not for the most part and i know that there's exceptions to this so exceptions don't make the rule but a company for the most part is going to take advantage not in a malicious way that you're thinking but they're going to take advantage in a business savvy sense of a unkept resource such as yourself in a non-traditional career path coming in and saying you can do a certain service right if you can actually do that service you can actually write that code they'll reward you in the long run right but you're gonna have to eat a shit sandwich right away and because your skills are untested you don't have a degree to back you up now that's why i would recommend a non-traditional career path to some people and a traditional to others it really depends on your personality right if you're okay with failing and most importantly if you have another line of work to back you up where you're not banking on just applying, applying, applying and not having a job on the side. You don't want to go to a non-traditional career path because you're going to bank in your mind on getting that job. And they're hard to come by. I, I mean, I try to get people jobs now in my discord that don't have degrees and it's tough. I don't even know how I did it sometimes because it, it's brutal. It can be brutal. Like companies will lock you out for not having a degree. I got lucky. But I think because I got lucky, I think of things in a way in which it's not aligned with the traditional or the school career path, right? I don't, now that I didn't go to school, um, 
well, I, I do have a two-year degree, but now that I did not go to school for four years, I kind of see the waste that there is in learning something such as, you know, I don't know, history or American politics or any of these kinds of classes that you're not going to use as an engineer. You Say you already know you want to be an engineer before you go into college and you still have to take all those core curriculum classes. I don't see the point in that. I, I really just don't. I, I don't see the point. Now, if, if you're someone that goes in for a general degree, right, and you don't know what you want to do, th those are fine. They could lead you down a path in which you're going to find something you really enjoy, and then you'll find your career for the rest of your life. You'll be really, really happy. But if you already have in your mind that you want to be an engineer, you want to be in computer science, or you want to be you know, an applied sciences physicist using machine learning algorithms or something like that, you should be able to kind of stick to those core components of those classes, regardless of if that doesn't help you complete your core curriculum, giving you that piece of paper. And that should be suffice enough to get a job, right? So I'm kind of trying to meet in the middle here where it's like, I don't recommend people not get a degree at all. And I don't recommend, well, I, I really would recommend you get a degree just because it's the parameters of which we have to play in, in terms of jobs. But in terms of actual, like if I had to, if I had my own utopian way of how the world would work, it really would be just very skill specific classes that if you know what trade you want to go into, you just go into that trade. For example, like we have trade schools for carpenters, right? They don't have to take math, science, ink. Well, they do have to take math. Don't get me wrong. I'm sorry about that. Sorry, dad. Uh, they don't have to take science classes. They don't have to take American politics classes where it's things that you won't ever use in your entire life. Right? You just won't use it. You'll be doing hours and hours of PowerPoints about shit you do not care about. Right? When you could be honing that skill that you know you want to do for the rest of your life, as you can with carpenter trade schools, as you can with plumbing schools, as you can with electrician schools. And I really think that computer science and engineering is similar to those kinds of trade schools. You are learning a trade. You are building things, whether it's in a virtual world, quote unquote, or not, you're building things, right? So you should be able to go to a school and focus on that specific trade. And I think that's what I would recommend most people if that did exist, right? But the game that we play in now, people will weed you out when it comes to, you know, CV uh, filters and things like that if you don't have that four-year degree or that ample amount of experience. Now, I do understand the experience part, but there's also this weird paradox where you have to get experience, but no one will give you experience. And I definitely will make a podcast on this sooner or later or a video on it, but we're essentially bottling people into this small little space in which they have to essentially get a degree. And that's why I recommend to people to get a degree, but to try to think in that non-traditional way. Like, yeah, you may have to do core classes that you don't care about, but, you know, get good grades, but don't focus on those kinds of things that aren't going to give you returns for what you actually know you want to do in life, right? Yeah, there might be a 20-page PowerPoint on American politics, right? I know this might sound bad, but <laughs> don't go all out on that PowerPoint. Yeah, do it because it's the right thing to do and you're going to college, but focus on what you know you want to do as long as you know you want to do it, right? I know that sounds super simplistic, but that really is the best advice I can give someone to go in a non-traditional career path in a traditional way, so to speak, right? Because you need that degree to sometimes get through filters, CV filters, things like that. But at the same time, it really doesn't make sense, in my head at least, to limit people who have such big potential by making them go to, go to college, pay all this money, getting all this debt. God, that's another topic in and of itself. But yeah, I, I really am a, a huge advocate of the non-traditional career path, but you really have to be willing to get in the mud, so to speak, for the first couple of years of your career. People will count you out because you don't have a degree. They won't think you have the skills for it. You're going to have to do side projects. You're going to have to show your, your personal you know, your personal currency of how good you actually are at your job by doing those side projects. And it's not to any fault of the employer at all, because the employer has to see some sort of evidence that you're going to be fit for the role that they're hiring you for. But it really is up to you if you're going to go down that non-traditional career path to go above and beyond and to show people that you are what you say you are and that you do deserve these kinds of roles. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know it was a little bit of a rant there. 
I really hope that it can help some of you guys that are trying to go down the non-traditional career path uh, have a little bit more ease. Or I really hope it helps some of you guys that were on the fence about going down the non-traditional career path to you know kind of stay the course, but keep it in the back of your mind that non-traditional mindset, so to speak. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care.